All right, so we talked about um, sea stars on Friday. Yes, Friday. Um, we're moving on with the echinoderms this week and looking at class Ophoroidea. In Ophoroidea, these are basket stars and brittle stars. Basket stars and brittle stars, this is the most diverse group of echinoderms. Big variety of different types of echinoderms. And we've got mostly predators, scavengers, and filter feeders. Um, their arms are long and can branch. And they form like baskets, which is how they get the name basket stars and brittle stars. And when they don't branch and they remain singular, this is how they get the name brittle stars, when they rem remain singular. Now, they are very commonly going to have their arms break off, and so they're really good at regenerating. <coughs> this is called autonomy. We're going to see autonomy also in lizard tails is a good example, specifically in gecko tails. Now, Liz, Liz our class lizard, the Liz's tail doesn't break off. Geckos have tails that break off. And gecko tails will regenerate and grow new tails. However, it is not something they like or prefer to do. And that is because it takes a lot of energy. It's hard work to grow a body part back. So they only do it as a last resort. So autonomy is not something that animals prefer to do. It is a last resort kind of thing that they do. And then also, um, Ophoroideas are dioecious, separate male and female. Mr. Harris, you got a paper clip I can hand? I got one, but. Thank you. 
The basket star has lots of branching along its arms, and the brittle star only has five <coughs> arms, but there are no branching. But you can see how long the arms are and why they look like they might be brittle. So with the brittle star, we do have um, kind of joints almost, and these arms would break off pretty easily for the autonomy. And that's why they would be easy to regenerate. The basket star, if you turn it upside down, when they dry, they do look like a basket, which is how they get the name the basket star. All right, then we've got class echinoidea. These are the sea urchins and the sand dollars. Sand dollars typically live close together, and this is good for reproduction, so they're able to reproduce pretty easily. Sea urchins can move their spine individually, and that's because they're really kind of placed in a socket, so they've got these little kind of divots, and then a ball that is placed in the socket so they, they can move their spines. And a lot of times the spines are hollow needles, and some of these sea urchins actually have dangerous venom that are inside their spines, so if you step on them, it can be quite painful and can cause a lot of um, pain and nausea and swelling and make you very sick if you were to step on these sea urchins. Some of them are fine. Some sea urchins you can actually eat um, without any consequences. But some sea urchins are quite painful. Some people that live along the coast can even use the needles as kind of like hypodermic needles for injecting and for like medicinal uses. Yeah. 
So this is the chewing part that they use to cut up small pieces of food. Um, so it's kind of like teeth, but it's not really teeth. And so they use it to basically like chew up their food pieces.